Okay, before we move forward, I have a question for you guys. Do you want to learn how to create code from scratch, or do you want to make money? Do you want to make money with web design, or do you want to waste your time building code from scratch? If you're going to build codes from scratch, then don't use Dreamweaver. Just get yourself a notepad and just start going to town. My simple techniques will get you up and running. I build 50, 60, 80, 270 thousand dollar websites, and I don't touch the code. Now, based on my experience, of course, I understand how to write code because I had to write code back in the 90s before Dreamweaver, before PageMill, before Front Page. So I certainly know how to do it, but you need to benefit and learn from the fact that Macromedia, which originally built Dreamweaver, spent millions of dollars to make your life simple in a WYSIWYG environment. Adobe took the next step. Now, Adobe Dreamweaver has very good code hinting for creating code from scratch, but you don't have to waste your time with that nonsense. Actually, I shouldn't call it nonsense. You don't have to waste your time going into the code. You can use my simple, simple time-tested techniques and the Adobe interface. Benefit from two things. Benefit from my experience. Benefit from the Adobe interface. I make things very simple by clicking your mouse. If you can use your mouse and click and double click, you can create any website solution, whether it's dynamic, whether it's PHP, whatever the script is, you can create things inside of Dreamweaver without knowing code. Dreamweaver by itself does a great job. Now there's tons and tons of extensions you can use as well. From Web Assist, there's all different types of extensions that Dreamweaver doesn't do by default. So extensions are great. I'm an extensions junkie. Here's my objective. My objective is making money. So while somebody's, on, while somebody's sitting there writing code, I'm on the beach earning 20%. That's a quote from Die Hard, one of my favorite movies. Anyway, so get to know the Dreamweaver interface. Get to know my techniques. I make things so simple, so simple. I can assure you, you're not going to see these techniques someplace else. So enough with my soapbox. Uh, let's move forward. Okay, so in our last episode, we put this inside the header tag. So the header tag could contain a lot of things. In this particular case, the header tag contains the page group tag, it contains the paragraph, and it contains the nav tag. So this content here, point A to point B, we're going to put this content here inside of an aside tag. Okay, so I'm going to put this inside the aside tag. Now understand something. The aside tag could go inside of a section tag. The other thing you want to understand too with HTML5 responsive web design is div tags are still relevant. We can still put things inside of div tags. We can still ID the div tag. As an example, here's a wrapper tag. Wrapper tag as an ID, it's a div tag. So we can ID things in, in our HTML5 code as well. So as an example, we can ID the header tag. We can call it branding header tag, branding, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's put this inside the aside tag. So here's a simple, simple way again to do this. I don't have to touch the code. I just hit Command T, Command T, Quick Tag Editor, Control T, Windows. In order to affect the content, I need to select the content. So I selected this content. Now a simple way to do this too, because it's just simply one paragraph. I could have come down here to the P for paragraph tag too and done this. But you can't do that for selecting multiple paragraphs. You have to physically select with your mouse. So select the tag and command T. Command T is quick tag editor. Now again, Dreamweaver is getting a little confused because this is a P tag and we want to wrap the P tag. So I, can, I could go to my code view. We're not going to write code, but I could go to my code view. So let's physically select this content from here. Let's physically select it with our mouse. So command T. Now I don't get the paragraph tag. That's what I'm looking for. I don't want the paragraph tag. I want wrap. See, this is wrap tag. I want to wrap the paragraph tag inside the aside tags. A-S-I-D-E. Again, very, very important step here, guys. The aside tag is an HTML5 tag. It's not an ID tag. I don't have a div tag called aside. This is a physical, physical tag, just like body's attack and H1's attack. This is an HTML5 tag. Return key once, twice. OK, 
Okay. Now let's scroll down here. This content here, this is going to be our main content. Now what I want to do here, and I'm just going to copy and paste this paragraph a few times. Well, here's a simpler approach to that. I just like to keep things simple. Let's actually wrap this inside of a tag. So let's select the tag, select the tag, and wrap it inside a tag called section. So we're going to select the tag here. Let's physically select it. Command T, Command T, quick tag editor, Control T for Windows. So we're going to put this in a tag called section. Okay. Then inside the inside the section tag here. Now this stuff here we don't need. We're going to remove this tag. We're going to remove the block quote tag. That formatting was probably left over from my insert from the previous video. So I'm going to show you a slick technique here. I want to remove this P for paragraph tag. So how do I do this? I either control click Macintosh, right click Windows, and move tag. Move tag. Okay. I also want to move this block quote. So control key, control key, remove tag. It physically takes the tag away. It physically moves the tag. So right now we're left with the section tag. Now, so I'll take this content here. This content doesn't have a tag. The content doesn't have a tag. So we're going to wrap the content command T inside of a P for paragraph tag. So again, advantage of quick tag editor, unlike going to the code, if you go to the code, you have to do an opening tag and a closing tag. Quick Tag Editor wraps the selected content, opens, closes the tag. So whatever tag it is, span tag, h1 tag, paragraph tag, image tag, it wraps the selection. Whatever you select, you're going to affect. It wraps the selection with a tag and closes out the tag by hitting Command T or Control T for Windows. Built into the process, it works. It's a gem. So it's a paragraph. Okay. So let's select this paragraph. Let's select paragraph. Notice P is inside of section. That's a good thing. I'm just going to copy and paste this a couple of times. So I just want more content here. Okay. Now I want to make this as the beginning of my section. I'm going to hit the return key. I'm going to make this a header tag. Command key 1, control 1, Windows. So header, command 1, command 2, command 3. Command 4, header 1, command 2, command 3, command 4, header 2, command 2, header 3, command 3. Windows, it's the control key. So for search engine purposes, technically, officially, a header tag should follow, be followed by an H2 tag. So here's an H2 tag followed by a paragraph tag. Now, I'm going to show you some very cool formatting techniques when doing this. Okay. Now, something we haven't talked about. What I want to do here, I have a rule for an H2 tag. I already set up before we started the video. I have my basic H2 tags. Now, I want to do something very exciting here. Let's say for my main content, I have my header tag for my main content, followed by the H2 tag. Now, what I want to have happen is the first paragraph that falls an H2 tag, I want it to have special formatting. Maybe I want to indent it. Maybe I want to italicize it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so how can I do this? How can I talk to this paragraph without giving it a class tag? And, very important step here, without giving an ID tag. I simply want to say, when a paragraph follows an H2 tag, I want to talk to that paragraph. So how do we do this? Well, we select the H2 tag, select the tag, come over here, make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. Now, if you want to be specific for a section, I have no problem with that. This is an H2 tag, and an H2 is inside of a section. Now, before we go further, I just want to share something with you. I want to take this content, this content, and I want to put this content inside of an article tag. HTML5 article tag inside the section tag. So the section tag can have a section. So this section title could be something like news and events. 
or for a blog, it could be the story of the day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the section tag. Inside the section tag, I'm selecting the content, the content, what the section tag contains, its content, command T. We're gonna type in the article tag. Just start typing and it'll appear right here and I hit the return key. So this is now inside the article tag and I could add for search engine purposes many articles. An article could go to an RSS feed as an example. So we're making it HTML5 search engine friendly for web and multiple devices, iPad, iPhone, et cetera, et cetera. So let's get back to this. So my objective here, I want to make this text italic and just because we can, I want to make it red. So this is P when P falls in H2 tag. So here's simple, simple, simple how I can do this. I'm going to select the tag, select the tag, make a rule. Select the tag, make a rule. So in this particular case, I do want to be this specific. I want to create a rule for H2, but H2 is inside of article, and article is inside of section. Then, very clever here, we're going to hit the plus symbol. We're going to say plus P. So what does that do for us? This says when a paragraph falls in H2 tag, immediately falls in H2 tag, I want to create a rule for it. So I'm about to create a rule. Exciting stuff here, guys. I'm going to create a rule for P when P falls in H2 tag. And like I said, we're going to make this just because we can. We're going to make it red and we're going to make it italicized. Okay, and there you go. How cool is that? Okay, so that's a P. Let's go back and make another slight change to this. Let's double click this and let's go to the box category and let's indent this from the left, say 1.2 mm spaces. Okay, if there's a better way to do things, I'm the guy. I am a total master of this stuff. I will show you how to make money. I will show you how to do this the right way. So therefore, whenever I create an article tag, and I have an H2 tag, and it's followed by a paragraph, it's going to follow these settings here. So I can do some other cool things to this too. Let's take this one step further. I've decided that I don't want this to be red type. I want this to be white type. So I'm going to cut the color. I'm going to make this white. I'm going to go to my background. I'm going to make it red. Cut, paste. And I'm going to give this box just some kind of basic padding all the way around here. So let's just do, because we can, let's just make this the same for all. Let's make this 1.2 M spaces all the way around and hit the apply option. How cool is that? Now, keep in mind, the padding space is inside of the paragraph. It, uh, sorry, the padding space is inside the box, the box itself. Margin space is outside the box. So what I want to do here is indent the box from outside 1.2 M's. And I don't want it smashing up my H2 tag. I'm going to drop it down from the top, say 1 M. So there we go. Now, just because we can here, let's have some fun with this. Okay. Let's get this period that's driving me insane. I don't want this period here. Okay. Now let's make this a rounded box. How do I do that? Well, on HTML5, it's simple to do this. Unfortunately, in HTML5 and HTML4, you have to physically go to your code and type this in. In HTML5, it's HTML5 CSS3 friendly with a dialog box. So how do I do this? We're going to select the tag. We're going to go to add properties. And again, I'm not going to type inside this dialog box. I'm going to click right here. And inside here, I'm going to type in B-O-R-D-E-R hyphen radius. So select the menu, type into the menu itself, not the dialog box. Brings up this interface here. Again, this is CS5.5. It doesn't work in CS5. You have to go to the code and do this from scratch. I click right here, and we can just say a 12-pixel rounded corner. Okay. How cool is that? Now, the other thing I can do, too, is I can go back to my same tag here. So this is simply the P when P falls H2. So I've done all these cool things simply to a paragraph. 
So let's do something else here. Let's go to Add Property. And again, we're going to click this menu. And we're going to type in T-E-X-T hyphen shadow. Text shadow. We're going to give the text some kind of drop shadow. Again, guys, just because we can, I know this site design is not looking too aesthetically pleasing, but it's the techniques behind what I'm doing that count, the techniques that are going to make you money. Okay, so I click here, text shadow, and let's give this a simple two pixel offset. Let's give the radius spread three pixels, and let's make our drop shadow black. I can simply type in pound symbol zero, 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 or of course I can pick from here and make it black, whatever is simpler for you. But you should know your base colors like zero, command, pound symbol zero, zero, zero is black, pound symbol zero is F, F, F is white, et cetera, et cetera. Now, this unfortunately, the rounded corner and the drop shadow, we can't see till we either publish to a browser or go to live view. I'm going to go to live view right now and I can see that this is going to be a drop shadow with the rounded corner. So we'll continue this project in our next video. Please subscribe, support what I do. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, etc., etc. The information's inside the description tag. Have a good day. Carpet DM. Talk to you soon.